Oh, God damn it. Didn't I just do it again? I just missed it again. I can't believe it. My birthday just hit. My birthday just hit this afternoon in the, the pick five. Happy birthday, Jamie, baby. It ain't no good. I didn't hit it. I didn't play. <laughs> <clears throat> my mother will be real nice and pissed. I hit it about a week before my birthday last year. You know what? I did too. And I'm going to tell you, it's a crazy story. And you know what? The only two people I told, uh, I told three people, two people believe me, one person thought I was just jiving. I I don't play the lottery and things like that, but I was out of state and I, said, and, and, um, I went to the liquor store and when I was going, Ms. Roof said, uh, go pick me up a lottery ticket. So I said, okay, because they sell them at the liquor store. So I mm -hmm. picked her lottery ticket and I said, I'm going to play mine too. And I forgot to play mine and I played it maybe like a couple of times. I don't do that. But I said, okay, I'm going to play. And I always play all of our birthdays for the month of August, right? Do you know that if I had played the numbers that I put, I, I won the lottery and didn't play it. And it was for millions of dollars. I was oh, so gosh. shocked. I sat like somebody, like I actually won and somebody tore my ticket up in front of my face. That's what I felt like. <laughs> That's how I make you feel. I'm like, what the that's hell? That make you feel. I couldn't believe that. That's what it felt like. And I was just like empty inside. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? Mm -mm. Wasn't supposed to have it. You weren't supposed to have it. I don't believe that. It's a hurtful thing. Wait, wait it's a hurtful thing. <laughs> Woo. Oh, that did something oh. to me. <clears throat> So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and say, because you guys will see it tomorrow. I am, okay, <clears throat> I am, quote, unquote, attempting Jumpstart January. Attempting. <clears throat> Crazy thing is, I already have, like, seven videos already scheduled. They just, got, so they just have to come. What? Yeah, you cheat, you cheat, you cheat. No. No, I'm not. I, I am being very practical. But the only thing is, I know uh, C. Mentis, she wanted to do theme weeks. I'm not doing theme weeks. And that's only because this is like a rough month for me because we have an inspection coming up, which means we're going to be working long days and all this other stuff. So my thing is, <clears throat> I'll do Jumpstart January, but I'm not doing things. I'm going to sit here, I'm going to give you a video once a day. I'm not gonna do what you're doing, James. I'm not gonna give an additional. Like I love the tea spellers, oh, but uh, like, well, you're not me. I'm not. I'm 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 not that fabulous. But a month here I'm comes gonna, the Capricorn. I'm just saying. I'm so glad we understand each other. <laughs> I'm just saying a motherfucker got a job. I ain't got time to be sitting here doing things and shit. I got a job and a motherfucking life. I'm just saying. So and I don't have either. <laughs> I don't have either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is I will give you like I said I'm gonna give you what I can because <clears throat> I know that I'm a chap I will thank you Callie thank you if you want you can jump on in hell <clears throat> but um it's just like I want to do it but it's one oh, of those so Callie butterflies going so you spoil him too I mean uh, uh, again do you not see who we're talking about right now a mess Oh Lord. Okay, because again, I'm the baby of the group in in more than one group. I'm the baby. So you know I have to be cuddled and caressed. All that good jazz. It has to happen. Makes me want to get my stick out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when the baby don't act right? Beat him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> A mess. Well, I can't do that. I black out your whole screen. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Well, I, I, I keep trying to tell y'all I am a whore. I'm high class. I work at a brothel. You got to spend them coins that bled to get this. Okay. Just saying. 
<clears throat> well, speaking of coins and bread and jobs, James, I have got to get with you on some prices because I need that off the shoulder black and white gown that Treasure Milan was wearing. Mm. <laughs> I did. I need it in my one side. So the one to gallon that said, I will never do this again. The whole time I was stitching, I said, I'll never do this shit again. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, okay, if you don't want to do it again, then just let it out. But just, just, out just, just hand it over. Hand it on over. <laughs> I need that. I do. I need that. The black and white one with the one. Th and and will, will you take the sleeve off? The I don't know. That one wasn't too bad. That one wasn't too bad. I need but, that one. It was it was black and white, and you take the sleeve sleeve off the arm, and yeah, yeah, that wasn't too bad. You know the funny part is that it's not actually white. It's just the way it looks on the video. It's actually yellow. It's a it's very yellow. light. It's yellow. Yeah, but it's a very it's the actual yellow, not gold. Not it's yellow like a yellow crayon, and um, really? but it does look white on screen. It looks white. And okay. that's also you can't see it's covered in crushed ice. So it literally oh. is like a silver glitter all over it. When you see it actually in person, it's all glittery and sparkly, but it didn't come across like that on film at all. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Fantasy, huh? But yeah, that one wasn't too bad. We do that one. That one wasn't too bad. Yeah. I got somebody that, that I need for them to turn their noses up. I want to make some people turn their nose up at me. I need something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I can do that. I can make it where they don't speak to you for the rest of the year. Oh, that's, yes, yes, yes. Make it where they don't speak to me anymore. Make it where they try to have me put out. Okay. <laughs> I can handle that. <laughs> I got oh, experience right. with that. And it's stretchy, mm. so it's comfortable. Yes. Mm. Yeah, you know, I like stretchy. I'm happy already. I look. I'm already. I'm getting a visual. <laughs> I'll get the visual. I'm walking, and they look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, much love actually had a function that she was going to, and I felt so good because she called me up and she's like, "Let's talk about it." And so we was. She was swapping me pictures to say, "What do I think she should do?" So I was like, "Oh, now that was cute." But she had a function that she needed to. To make a splash, and she did. Yeah, I know she did. Uh, and you know, she's tall too. Yeah, she is. She is tall too. I'm like, girl, oh, honey. She ran up in there like EF Hutton, baby. She was the yeah, everything. <laughs> Thank you, Cali Butterfly. Yeah, but that, yeah, I was supposed to actually do um, to duplicate my one jumpsuit for Lady Nika for her birthday, but I had gotten sick. But I, I'm we're gonna get it together. She'll get it. She'll get it. But she wanted that for her birthday. Man, I'm telling you, you have got it going on, got it going on, going on. I try. I got to have it. So and I really look forward to seeing everybody at the blackout this year. And uh um, yes. but now that it's going to Atlanta, I didn't want I wanted to go to the Vegas blackout. I don't want to go to Atlanta. I want to go to Vegas. Just hold that fun. Just hold that thought. Huh? Just hold that thought. Hold the thought? Just hold that thought. Okay. <clears throat> well, All right, so here's the thing. <clears throat> Since uh, 2016 is right around the corner, <clears throat> let's do this. Let's, we, you could do either or or both. So either, Tell everybody what you're looking forward to in 2016 or give a word that you think is going to best describe 2016 for you. And since I threw out the question, I'm going last. Ding. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, you're going to have to, you you know, I, I, I've been sipping a bit, so you're going to have to split those two questions up again. What's the first? What? <laughs> uh, what are you looking forward to in 2016? 
Uh-huh. And if you can use one word <clears throat> to describe how you feel 2016 is going to be, what will be that word? <clears throat> I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first. I got to see look, first. That's that Capricorn. That, see that? He was going to take the back seat, but he was like, no. I'm that's that Capricorn. <laughs> now I got to get up front. That's that Capricorn. That's it. Because <laughs> I don't do backup. You don't do backup, mm. do you? You always do lead. Mm. I'm, I, wait, wait. I do backup. I do very well doing backup. Thank you very much. Well, I'm happy for you. I've always been Diana Ross. I've never been Mary Wilson. <laughs> I only do the lead. Mm. I mean, here's the thing. I did backup, but because I have such a strong presence, I was always the lead. See, they just see, didn't know I was the see, lead. It always turns over to some bullshit. See? See how that works? <laughs> Always take a left turn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was before, you, no, wait, man, push through wait, Diana. Wait, <laughs> wait. Bef- no, before no, before I answer the question, I was in a uh, male acapella group in high school, and when we finally like had our core members, I was the only baritone slash bass, only right. one. So, and I've only had one solo the whole entire time. But with that being said, we had many tenors and falsettos. I was the only bass held down the section so no matter you can hear all them high notes but you hear one motherfucker holding down the whole damn section this motherfucker right here so i never was the lead but i was always the center of attention so anyway you had a big mouth <clears throat> very much so <laughs> stop playing anyway since you want to be best your camera and shit <laughs> What I am looking forward to in 2016 is um, just a lot of uh, team building and just like, um, <clears throat> I guess we could say coming together when it comes to YouTube. Because I know uh, in 2015, more or less with the respective groups that we belong to, there was a lot of unity. There was a lot of shout outs. There was a lot of support. <clears throat> and that was a beautiful thing. Like, I'm not going to lie. There was so much support. This past year, it was ridiculous. Like I forced that. Either. Yeah, so I for I, I envisioned 2016 just being even greater when it comes to the support and just you know just the whole being a family dynamic. I think that's going to be a big thing. Yep. And if I if I can use one word to describe my 2016, you and I we've already talked about this, but the word branding. <clears throat> that will be oh, I thought you were going to say horror. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just saying. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I want to get a T-shirt that has the acronym HO on it, which is happiness over everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be like, be like, you are like, ho, what does ho mean? Happiness over everything, you know? Just saying. <clears throat> but no, um, my, uh, Callie Buffa, she said, I want uh, to be more confident in 2016 and not afraid of change. And my word is growth. That's good. I like that. I like that. Um, yeah. I, I, I should probably be, uh, well, I don't think I have an issue with confidence. I think I need to be less egotistical. But that's not gonna happen in 2016. That's <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> but my word for 2016 is branding, and is li- like, cause again, I didn't start doing YouTube for the glitz, the glam, the fame, marketing, and whatnot. But I'm at a point now where I can. Like, I just did a video of, for the uh, French, uh, yeah, the uh, uh, French press, the like a uh, little uh, coffee uh, tea thing. And it was actually sent to me from uh, the actual company. Like, I didn't buy it. They sent it to me. It was just like, can you just... All they wanted was a shout-out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'll do you one better. I'll do an unboxing, I'll do a testing, and I'll do a review. So that was actually my last video for Don't Stop December. Yay! But, you know, just getting to the point where, you know, I could just branch out more and just do more. Like, even with this, well, with the uh, panel. This is an idea that me and Squeaky Jones came up with. I just happened to kind of like start it up. But, you know, just working on branding and really creating a name for myself, you know, even though I think when people hear spilling all the tea, they think about this crazy son bitch right here. 
but I think 2016 for me is going to be the year of my uh, branding. So there we go. James, your turn. So you can either choose either or or answer both. Um, the, well, I'll use the one word, whore. Whore works for me. <laughs> for 2016, the word is going to be whore. No. Oh yeah, I want what I want, and I want it now. Thank <laughs> you with that. No, I didn't. Th no, I don't think whore is bad. Oh, no, 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 no. Whores are classy. I want what I want. I want it now. No, not that. No, here's the no, no, because with a whore, you have to pay up front. With a hoe, you have to put whatever changes in your pocket. Yeah, but I hope you just promised the bitch you're gonna pay her. <laughs> it never happens. <laughs> yeah, girl, I'm gonna take care of you. Mm -hmm. How about being kept? There you go. Okay. Or. Wait, yeah. Wait. He said, or. or. Did I not say that? Or. Did I not say that the other day that I was. <laughs> Confirmation. Yeah. Or. And then, yeah, when you're being kept, it's. Or. <laughs> yes, me. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm actually um, I want to be like whoreish or whore esque, but no, I, I'm going to get some things done that I want to get done because okay. I have no reason not to. Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely got some things that I need to get moving on, okay. and I will. Just remember, happiness over everything. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> I promise to leave a couple people happy. <laughs> oh wait, and if you missed it, I was saying that I'm what like I, I'm already gonna get the Team Monique shirt. That's one shirt. See, that's not making me happy. That that's not making me happy at all. But I'm Don't also listen to me, wait. I'm happy. I want the first oh. one. But I'm also going to get a uh, T-shirt with the acronym Ho on it. The t-shirt with ho oh. and ho stands for happiness over everything. Okay. So yeah. Child, listen. I'm like, you know what? 2016 is gonna be the year of the ho. Every time, <laughs> every time you wear that Modi's shirt. Every yeah. Year that Modi, year every time y'all wear that Monique shirt, that Monique shirt, I'm gonna come back with a sequence. <laughs> Jacket that says fuck shit. Uh, oh, oh, oh. And then, <laughs> but you know what, James? You need to get those cookie t shirts out. <laughs> cookie! You need to get those out. Well, okay, look, let me spill this. I'm oh. actually doing. Well, wait, you know what? Let's just let's cover this now. Because you know, before you came. Mr. Spill It All the Tea. You all oh. actually had a segment. I had a segment called Spilling the Tea with me before you came. And I stopped doing it because your name was Spilling All the Tea. And I liked you. Now, if I didn't like you, I would have just kept on going and just let you have it. But I left that segment alone. And then I said, I'll have to bring it back. Okay. And change. Hey, Carol Denise coming to chop you up about stealing those. Oh, oh, I was about to say that. It wasn't that kind of no, because I actually was doing it, but I did. I, I was getting ready to start back because I had slacked off. Then I met you and I liked you. And I said, oh, well, that's too much like his name. So I left it alone. And I'm actually bringing it back. It's bringing my segment back. Bring it back. It, no, not that. It'll be actually called Spill a Boy Talk. <laughs> so, that'll be, yeah, I don't need to be doing spilling the tea with me and your name is spilling all the tea. That's just too close. It's just too close. Um. Yeah, and then we run it in the same circle. That's just too much. Mm -hmm. well, I, I don't mean, need it's, you. Wait, here's the thing. It's not like I'm finna It's too much. It sounds crazy. But I'm not going to get on camera and do a video about, you know, Mr. James Cole was sitting here spilling my motherfucking name and shit. Like, I'm not finna do that. I don't do things like that. Well, I wouldn't be worried if you did. I got some. You bring your Capricorn. I got some for yours. So oh, no problem. <laughs> I'm going to say this. If I Cause no, cause if I do a video, it's gonna be real short, sweet. Be like, this is for Mr. James Cole. Was if you want to steal my shit, find me on Twitter. <laughs> I will send you my number, and we can talk about this shit. 
in the video. That's it. I'm grown as fuck. We ain't got we ain't got to deal with these motherfucking elementary. Tina type Mitchell didn't want to have no conversation with nobody. She was picking that. Ain't nobody scared of y'all real. I done told him before. I'm not scared of him or Lady Nika. You I'm don't not have to be. Don't call her. Somebody ain't scared of neither one of them. You don't have to be scared because the God that I serve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't it would be that don't same lie. one that would say, "Y'all go ahead and fight it out." <laughs> But where is Lady Nixon? Did y'all text her, tweet her or something? Tell her come on in. She's, she's busy. Uh, she's actually doing some work. She working. She trying to make that wet. I know that's right. <laughs> hey, Lord, I what? know that's right. Think you making that wet too. All yeah. right. Cause Lord, I'm going to tell you, because if I had some, some dough to roll tonight, yeah, I'd be rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, here's I, I mean, on some real shit, I'm making bread right now too. I'm on some, uh, I'm on paid to leave, so I'm getting paid right now to sit here and act the motherfucking fool with y'all. That's what happens when you when you have a career. That's what happens. Yeah, it works. And you know, you real. You said something that really changed what I thought my answer was going to be. Now I still have my my answer is still the same, but you helped me expand on what I was thinking. I. I thought of some things, but I wasn't going to actually share it. But when I stepped away for a minute, I could still hear you. And uh, you were talking about, you know, different things that you were going to be doing with YouTube, you know, all of that and your branding and marketing and your channel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I I really am. Um, I hope I'm not talking out of turn. It's not my turn. It's no, go ahead. Yeah. Is that that? Yeah. You Go got. for it. Okay. Um, I think I'm really going to. I no. I I am. I am going to really focus on this YouTube thing because really now I did have a YouTube channel before, and it got shut down. It got deleted for some silly stuff. You know. You know how YouTube does all these different changes. Yeah. Well, what happened is when YouTube first merged with the Google Plus, mm -hmm. when they did that first merger, um, they were trying to make you connect all of your accounts. Yeah. Now, I had a Gmail address that I never used. My Gmail address was just a default for junk mail. You know, if I wanted to sign up for something and they wanted a, 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 an email address, that was just a default. They weren't getting my real one. So I had a Gmail address that I had not used in two years. Well, when I deleted my Gmail account, YouTube automatically deleted my YouTube account because that's oh, when wow. YouTube, yeah, YouTube had actually merged with Gmail. So when I deleted the Gmail account, they cut my channel off, got rid of everything, all my videos. They were being shady. It was so then I said, but then they tell me, okay, you can there's a way that you can get this back. So number one, you can never get anybody on the phone, so forget that forever. You can't get anybody <laughs> ever. Oh. Yeah. But I I did all of the stuff they wanted me to do. I jumped through 27 hoops. I did everything they asked for. They were asking me, they were asking me stuff I really didn't know. Like, what date and time did you first start this account? I don't oh, remember God. what date and time. Then they ask me all this other stuff. Now, they keep giving me questions, and I'm answering the most. Now, the questions I did answer, only I could know. Then they wanted uh, a credit card number. Mm -mm. No, I did that too. I gave them all the information that they needed, and then after six days, they contacted me through email, which means they do have my information through email to tell me that I couldn't prove that I was who I said I was. Ciao. I'd have told him to get on. It was so discouraging. So I lost all my videos. I lost everything there. And and during that time I was doing I have was doing reviews, but I mostly did advice. And advice is really my forte. So when okay. I started coming back on YouTube, I said, I might do a few reviews, do some other things or whatever, but advice is really my forte. And I do believe that, when, you know, listening to Yarrell and talking about him fo focusing on branding, the marketing and everything, 
that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on this YouTube thing. And my, I'm, you know, I'm going to do other things. But my forte is going to be advice okay. because I'm really good at it. Why and not? So that's, that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> Why well, not? I mean, the thing is, like, people fail to realize, like, you know, YouTube is a big, like, a big-ass ocean. Everybody yeah. can eat. Like, people be thinking, oh, I can't sit here. Like, no, nah, shit, we, like, what we're doing right now. Like I said, none of us are, are stuck up here. Like, we're all coming together. But it's yeah. been for everybody to eat, you know, because at the end of the day, reg like, with this video, regardless of who posts it, and I'm going to give it to Nina, you know, uh, the ghetto view, she's going to post it on her, uh, I'm sorry, Nika, uh, she's going to post it on her uh, channel. Okay, she's posted it on hers, but if her subscribers are not subscribed to either one of us three, guess what? They might come check us out. Like it's it's big yeah. enough for everybody to eat. Like, and that's another thing about branding is, like I said, the panel itself. It's a group of us, but it's not like okay, well, I'm doing this video, so I'm going to mm -hmm. upload on my channel. No, like I told you know the ghetto view before we got on. You're going to upload this to yours. Like I said, it's all about everybody coming together and having a good time, and we all expanding through each other. That's what this is about. It's not about egos and all this other stuff. Like when I say that 2016 for this guy is about branding, it's mm -hmm. about branding. That's right. That's right. And I was so glad to hear you say that. And that just gave me confirmation for some things about what I wanted to do. And that's it. I'm, I, you know, I can, like I said, I can do the other stuff, reviews, whatever. But I know what my strengths are. And that's the advice. I might be able to give a little review or whatever, but that's my strength lies in it. And I'm going to focus on that and just do what I do because that's my strength. That's where it lies. And I'm going to brand, which I need to anyway, because I fell off on, on some things. You know, it was discouraging to lose my videos and my channel and all of that stuff. It was. And I mean, I stayed going for a couple of years. Because I just couldn't get it together. You know, when it came to that, it's like, I don't know, because what if this happens again? And I still can't answer the questions they're going to ask me. You know, what day and time did you start? I yeah. don't know. You know, so, but that's what I'm going to do. And I'm so glad to hear that. And see, marketing, advertising, and branding is a strong suit that I have with the career that I've had. Uh, you know, I, I've for over 25 years, I was in the in the career that that needed that. That's what what I had to do. And for the past six years, I've been working from home, and even with subcontracting, that's still part of what I did. And I keep thinking to myself, how is it that I can do this and make a living doing it for other people? Why can't I take my skills and do yeah. that for myself? Yeah, not. Mm. And I'm going to do that. And anybody who needs my help that I feel like is really, they, they just want to know and they need some help, I don't have any problem with that. Now, I don't want to be used. Use me. Use my talents to help you. That's fine. But don't take exactly. advantage of me. And that's what I'm talking about. You know? So, shoot. And, you know, we all have so much to offer and so much to give. And like you said, both of you said, there's room enough for everybody. And it, it bothers me that when you go to some channels, it's like it's so much back, but there's so much backbiting and everything. But with this circle that we all seem to pretty much be in, there is nothing yeah, but support. That part. Yeah, it's support. This, everybody supports each other. There is room for everybody. People boost you and tell you, come on, you need to get on mm -hmm. with it, you know. And that's what I love because, like you said, we can all eat. And we eat better when we all bring something yes, to indeed. the table. Mm, that's yeah, right. It works. Mm, and, like, and even with something like this, like, I'll be honest. <laughs> with me, James, uh, Lady Nika, uh, Sean Bradley, and even uh, Much Love KY, when we did this for New Year's Eve, first and foremost, everybody was trying to say, you started something new. I'm like, do y'all not realize that Nina be on black? All the fucking time. Like, do I used not, to watch her all the time. Like, do y'all not? I used to watch Nina on Blab all the time before I was even 
subscribe to Blab. I used to watch Nina. I'm like, do y'all not realize that she didn't like she like she is the queen of Blab, Periscope, and YouTube? But y'all not realize that she know what she's doing. I just want, yeah. you know, I just want to do something fun like that's. But at the same exact time, you know, just giving everybody a chance to just come together and just have fun like that's all of this really is you know and i mean the reality is you know like and i even said it in my shout out video last saturday like when i thank everybody that was on blab especially nina i meant that because nina has over forty thousand subscribers first and foremost when she did her blab uh it was between my birthday and christmas eve i just happened to join and james was the one that was like uh, T. Spilling, bring your ass on me. <laughs> and I was in the fucking bed. Like, I was in the bed. So I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah. And she was like, come on in the room. You know, and it was one of those ways. It's just like, you know, even though, you know, we're all the same and, you know, we all put our, our drawers and panties on, you know, one leg at a time, unless you, everybody just jumping straight into them with both feet in. I don't know. <laughs> but, I you know, it's man. like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, the fact that she was. You like, yeah, just come on in. And then when we did ours for uh Christmas, you know, the Christmas Eve one for Christmas Day, she slid now she wasn't put together, but she was like, fuck it, I'm gonna come on. And the fact that she did that, you know, and she has over 40,000 subscribers, she was like, you know what, I'll come in and show some love. Like, that's what I love is that, you know, even though you have more subscribers than all of us on here put together, you know, you are still humble. And we want to just come on in and just have a good time. Like, that's what I love about this particular group. Like, we are a family. We crazy as fuck. <laughs> uh -huh. We crazy as fuck, but we a family. And it's good. Uh -huh. We are. I just don't want nobody to know I know you. <laughs> <laughs> then you go again. <laughs> I mean, you should be uh, privileged to know that you know me, but... That's okay. Whatever. I'm, I'm, yeah. Thing, I... When I blow, when I blow up, you gonna be one of those like you know it was me that helped them get to a thousand subscribers. <laughs> Just remember. <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say a word. He sure won't. He sure won't. He's gonna I'm get gonna that look. look. I'm gonna wait on my check. <laughs> <laughs> but, but James. James what I do want is a favor. Uh, okay. I need a favor. Hold with, I... The next time that I uh, get on stage and do what I does, and I'm gonna leave it where it's at, I'm gonna need for you to come on stage and just uh, serve uh, one good time. I mean, I, I know you get paid for your services, but would you be willing to uh, help a brother out? That depends on what you want me to do. Okay. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do backup. I'll play backup for you though. <clears throat> oh, oh no, no, no. You you gonna have front you gonna have the stage to yourself. It, I'll you know I cause I don't like speaking cryptic. When we're done with this, I'll call you and I'll kind of give you a rundown of what I'm thinking if okay. I can get it to work. But it should be fun. But right. give me a second because I need to dispose of these and get a refill so y'all can. Good Lord, look at that. Look at y'all. Good. good thirsty individual. Yeah, I'm that. a fish. <laughs> <laughs> He's a mess. <laughs> well, yeah, I have to get it together. And you know, I had an email address that was set up to, to receive advice. So something told me, go click on that email address because I'm supposed to get alerts from Time Warner if I get new emails. So I went to that because it's a sub account. So I went there and I found out that they suspended the account and I'm saying why? And they told me because it's been inactive. I'm like, but it doesn't matter that I don't use it. I pay for it. Mm-hmm. So why are you, so what's happening to the emails that people are trying to send me? Are they getting a return message or are they getting nothing? It doesn't matter whether or not I use it. I pay for it every month. So, and you really had me on that Comcast. I mean, was it Comcast? Uh, um, uh, yeah, Comcast and Freaks. Ooh, you have, 
You made me start to, I, ooh, <laughs> I got something caught in my craw over that video. I can't stand them. Boy, they got with me. I'm like that with direct TV. I am so sick of them. And I'm going to tell you the truth. The only reason I had them is because it was free. Because I subcontracted for another company. Because um, years ago, we got direct TV. I was against it. He got it. And I'm going to tell you what they told us. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> they told us, okay, we had a light rain. But then it got windy, but we lost our signal and we had no TV. I mean, we had nothing, right? So I called them and they told me to turn the dish. So I told her, I said, uh, ma'am, the dish is on the roof. She said, yeah, just turn it. I said, uh, I say again, you know, the dish is on the roof. She said, yeah, just turn it. I said, bitch, the dish is on the roof. What do you, you come and turn it. <laughs> Tell me to turn it in. I told her, and I wanted to make sure she heard me clear. She's like, yeah, turn it. I'll pay y'all and I'm supposed to climb up on the roof and turn the dish? Yeah. <laughs> See that's see see that was that, that was when I was on high hormones and stuff. You know my whole <laughs> because I know I could have handled it better, but I just didn't. I didn't even want to. I ain't gonna lie. I just didn't want to handle it better. I wanted to say what I said to her. So from that day on, I was through with Direct TV, and that was years ago. And it wasn't my choice to get them in the first place. He did that. So. Fast forward to all these years, the only reason why I had it is because it was free as part of a package for me subcontracting for another company that does their tech support because I was doing their tech support. <clears throat> but honey, they, they, are, they are out of their mind. Every time I turn around, I'm like, well, the stuff is not working, but there's no need in me calling them because if I call them, essentially I'm calling myself because I do the tech support. <laughs> so yeah you know so I'm doing all the stuff I know to do and it's not working and it's just not it's really just not a good service it, look if it works you're fine but if you if you have a drop of rain or a poof of a breeze your stuff will go out and you can forget it and I, I just don't want them and then they had the nerve now I set up a separate account so that um, they can give me a direct deposit for my commissions, right? Well, when I stop contract subcontracting for them, do you know that I saw that they hit my account for four hundred and sixty dollars for their damn equipment? Okay, I had to bring it down. I said, I'm not even going to contact them. Why? I would have turned it all the way up. Okay, no, I did. I brought it down. And then I said, okay, I'm not even going to contact them. I contacted my bank. I told them that this was an, un an unauthorized draft. The only reason why they have my banking information is to make deposits. They're not authorized to make any draft. And my bank put my money right back. So I'm cool with that. But I, I, you know, what I want to do is something else. But see, it's a small world. You never know. I can't go out here and act the donkey because I never know who I'm going to work for again or subcontract for. Mm, that's true. Okay? Better than and me. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to mess that up because there are a lot of companies who take on subcontractors to work for major companies. And I don't need my name coming across somebody's desk. As you know, that fool that talked about my grandmother's tombstone and you know, no, they don't, I don't need that. So I'm, I'm going to chill. But do you know what that did to me? $460 the next day for equipment that was free. 
What? <clears throat> what happened? You don't want me to say what? No, I do. You don't want me to <laughs> I'm I can't. I'm scared now. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm not going to say. I'm scared. <laughs> okay. All right. I tell you what. Look at my eyes. All right. <clears throat> okay. That's what it's a. Uh, I I had to I had to bring myself all the way back to reality. <clears throat> Because I've got to conduct myself in a certain manner because I don't know who I'm going to come across again. You never know. That's true. Yeah, you know? Well, James had to step out for a second. I said, depending on how long we're on here, he may or may not be back. Somebody just tried to step in. Here we go again. Go get your own square. You get on your phone and take up that open seat. You got my square. I, I want to be on your square because I want to be known as just read my book too. <laughs> I will do a we together in this. Lord. I'm your sidekick. I want to get my good times, bad times, and, and, and ugly times. Go ahead. Pull, pull up. And you know what? And I'm going to tell you this, Yara. Now, this is my baby. And you talk about spoiled. And she's not even a Capricorn. <laughs> I'm all over for young. I'm not spoiled. I mean, I'm the baby, but I'm not spoiled. Uh, I think you are, Yara. Because some of your videos, I'm like, oh, he just a spoiled you, brat. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, how do you get spoiled from my videos? I, I don't understand. Crazy, yes. Crazy, Sometimes, yes. because sometimes, like, the, some of the answers you give, I'm like, that is so spoiled of him. He just wants it to be about him and nobody else. Because I see it in me. I see it in me, too. I see a lot of you in me, so it's okay. It's okay to be spoiled. You just have to own up to it. I am not spoiled. I am very selfless. I give a lot of myself. Not spoiled. Oh. <laughs> what well, it was paused. Well, why? Why? <laughs> yeah. yeah, get your own plan. Well, I'll tell you this. This is my daughter. I'm going to give you a little insight to who I am. This is my daughter. Do you want me to tell your name? Yeah. Okay, when she's on Periscope, she shows up as Winter. Winter Acevedo. So that's her. Um, my only child for 22 years. 22 years. And then I had another child. So I have two daughters. I got a 12-year-old and a 33-year-old. and. So she was by herself, all her like spoiled, mm. rotten. And then when I had my other one, she had me to herself as well, spoiled, rotten. Put them in the house together, and it's mayhem. And I say it gets on my nerves sometimes. How in the world can you have two? I mean, it's just like, it's ridiculous. It's not that bad. Yes, it around. is. She's just exaggerating. No, I'm not. She got to have me to herself her whole life. And now this other one had me to herself until this baby came back. Now, if I say, baby girl, oh, they both want to answer. And then they look at each other. <clears throat> <laughs> I call one bundle and one boom boom. Ah, she ain't boom boom, that, that's my name. Well, I am Boom Boom. Put your in my ear. Now, her name is Bundle, and I'm Boom Boom. You can't call her Boom Boom. Don't say the wrong thing around. Oh, my goodness. I mean, just back and forth all the time. Ridiculous. Now, so this shows you that my life is in a different place because where most women my age are in life, I am different. I'm not there because like like if someone said, hey, let's go out, let's go do something or whatever. Well, I can't, I, I, I kind of, I really don't fit. I can't because I got a small child to take with me, right? 
Okay, now if I look on the other way, when I go to school and there's functions or PTA and children's days, I'm there and I'm older than the parents and the teachers. Okay, <laughs> so I don't fit there, but I don't fit with the people in my age bracket because they're having fun. They're not trying to bring little kids around because their grandchildren are the age of my youngest daughter. They don't feel like that bullshit. They're like, no, no, no. I mean, well, they just throwing their ass in a so, circle. That's all. I, but look, <laughs> but where does that put me? I am in a precarious position. I, I don't fit in these other worlds. Well, just, okay, you well, know they just I mean? throw your ass in a circle. It's real simple. I do, I, I, <laughs> throwing my ass in a circle got me two children 22 years well, apart. Well, I'm not well, going to shit. I throw ass in a circle all the time. No. I got no kids. I throw my ass all the time. I ain't got not one child. I ain't got not a baby mama. I ain't got, I ain't got nothing. See, see, I'm a pro at it. <laughs> I ain't throwing nothing else in the last time I threw it in the circle. It resulted in no. I told her to do it one more time to get that one to baby brother. No, man. Okay, well then, well, then dirty wine. Just dirty wine one time. No. No. Let me tell you, I can't even put my shoes next to somebody's slippers. I'm too damn firm. I'm wait. I'm waiting for all my menopause to fully kick in. I don't want. And menopause is a beautiful thing. I don't care who told you otherwise. If you heard bad, they're lying. They've been listening to men because a woman will tell you that menopause is beautiful. <laughs> We don't want to have cycles anymore. We don't want any more babies. Oh, now I'm looking at the side. That's right, Classy Boots. You tell them. That's right. And and and, and TB Bonnet said, that's right. No, 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 I ain't yes, doing that. Anymore. Yes, yes. Wait, 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 wait. No, no. <laughs> I said the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I know, I agree with me. Go ahead, Miss Classy Boots. You are right about Look, that, girl. Uh -oh. all, all that I'm saying is, you just need to know how to throw your ass in the circle, but keep the but keep the goodies in the cookie jar. Okay, you you don't take the top off. You keep the top on, and that's it. I, that, you got you got to learn the magic of it. That's all. I'm I'm, I'm just there's too much magic in my swag. I can't. I, I, I can't. I'm just saying, shit. it's a lot of people that want to get some of this uh Keebler cooking. They just can't get none. They, they be on the land. Oh, 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 oh. See, that was a problem for me too. See, I, that's another thing because because they were all too short. I can, these little damn elves. They need to go back up in the tree and keep. That's the problem. Both of their dads were midgets. I can't fool with them little short ass people. If they don't get back in that tree and bake some cookies, I, I no, no, no more keep my elves. Daddy, daddy, my daddy didn't do nothing to you. He's short. He ain't short. He's tall like me. My daddy ain't <laughs> do nothing to you. Yeah, he's tall like her, a whole five one. My daddy, he ain't do nothing to you. That's your fault. Did you? <laughs> Tell me. Oh my I told you get some ice. You mean the whole thing? Get this out of here and get out of my conversation. Go put this back. I ain't Shut got up. nothing else to do. So I mean, and that only job. find something for me to mix this stuff with. Ah, Lord, <clears throat> nah. <laughs> so, 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 what are y'all eating tonight for uh, New Year's Eve? Well, I'm feeling a lot better thanks to this. I'm telling you, I was determined. I said, I am going to come on blab and I, I dosed myself so much. And then with the other doses I've been taking, <laughs> I feel so much better. Uh, I'm making an, some hors d'oeuvre platters. We have it's devil's right here. Keep me going every day. Okay. <laughs> Classy Boots said liquor. <laughs> Go ahead, Classy Boots. Here you go. <laughs> okay. I've got, um, I'm making some hors d'oeuvre platters. So we have goat cheese with chutney and caviar. Okay. I've got prosciutto. Can't fuck with that, but okay. Yeah, yeah, I know you already put yeah. I, I, I got I prosciutto. And um, I've got the, I'm making some smoked salmon dip. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's delicious. It's the best. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just doing, you know, I'm doing hors d'oeuvre platters and that's it. We're going to keep it light finger foods. We make our own little party here. You know, um, I got a little bit left of that holiday cheer that I mix up. Plus we got a, well, almost a full bottle of Pepe Lopez. <laughs> so me for her sending me out in the rain earlier. While y'all was starting up on blab and she cut me out of it. I'm about to cut you out again. You're in my square. I told you, get your own square. Well, I didn't take no space on my phone. There's an open seat right there. Get your phone. Bye. Go get your phone. It's going to take space up on my phone. Well, go on the PC in my office. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sit there in silence. So, yeah, so I, I'm in a different place in my life. Where I should be, I'm not. Where I shouldn't be, I am. Where I, maybe, I, you know, there's just so much going on, you know? It's like, but, and some things I don't fit, but the but the reality is I have no choice but to fit. That That's where I am. That's my life, okay? I, I have children in different age brackets, there's different things I have to do. And it worked out fine because I, even though I am personable and sociable, I don't always have to be a people person. I can have fun by myself. And that's why it bothers me. When I hear people say they're bored, I tend to stay away from them because I say a person who's bored is not good company for anybody. True. Because if you, yeah, if you can't entertain yourself, how the hell are you going to make good company for me? So I am fine. I look, I am here in my little, my, 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 my little bungalow and I never have a dull moment. There's always <laughs> something going on and it's very interesting all the time. Uh -huh. I got you. I said, I'm very interested. I, I entertain myself. You know what? I'm entertaining y'all right now. Y'all see these? These are real. <laughs> Yeah. Real. They're real. See, see how they just real. Real. See? Never a dog. Never a dog. You A cup. You wanna see some F's? <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, stop. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, my baby. They're like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A minus. A minus. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My baby got mad. I'm sorry. Come okay. Uh. <laughs> it is, uh, it's very different for me. I got all kinds of things happening. You know, I, I'm in a lot of different worlds right now. You know? Um, most, most women my age are going to see their children and their grandchildren. And that age of what my grandchild would be, I mean, a child that age. So when I deal with other parents, it's just not working out, you know. And when there's women in my age bracket that know that, hey, well, let's talk to Renee. The first thing the other one said, well, no, because, you know, she's got the, she's got the little one. No, she can't come in. And I can't be upset with that. Because I can understand that. If I'm trying to hang out, I don't want a bunch of kids around either, you know. So it's okay. But like I said, I got plenty going on. I really don't need any kind of outside interest in that perspective. I don't. I got a lot going on. We try to give you a break. We try, no, you don't. We try to push you out and go out. No, you don't. No, you, but, but see, hush. No, nah, she says that. But that's not the truth because I can't. Well, I for uh, I guess we could say New Year's Eve. What I did is um <clears throat> I have a uh, membership to uh, Sam's Club, so I went ahead bought some food. Like I said, because y'all know I'm trying to you know get get my little slenderization and you know on. Um, but uh, in the midst of getting all the good stuff, I got some um. Nacho cheese mix. I bought actually 10 pounds of ground beef, so like two pounds of that. I ground, uh, yeah. Well, it's, wait, no, don't do that. No, it's do, what, no, what I, 
what I did is I uh, I took like a pound and a half, ground it up, and threw some taco uh, seasoning on it. So I'm using that for my top for uh, my nachos. Ooh. So I, I so I, like I said, I have nachos literally in there. All I gotta do is just uh, heat up the um, cheese and the meat and put them together. So there's that. Um, like I said, um, I have uh, I took two pounds and made some uh, meatballs, and the uh, the rest of it's just like broken up into little bags. All right. Hey, Jay Daryl. What's up? Happy New Year's Eve. He being shy. He being shy. Oh, hold on, I'm trying to catch up. What we talking about? <laughs> we just talking about what we eating on tonight, shit. That's all we talking about. Oh, chitlins, college greens, mashed potatoes, cornbread, Kool Aid, some iced tea, the whole shebang. Did Did, did you say chitlins? Chitlings. Oh no, 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 miss me. no, no! I can't do chitterlings. I can't do chitlins. I no, no. Oh. And the bad thing about it, I used to always eat it. I, I can't. I mean, granted, with my faith, I don't eat pork. But even before then, I couldn't do chit. No. You know, I can't do like I, I tell my moms if I come home for the holidays, cook some chitlins. I guarantee you, I'll be in the hotel in less than twenty minutes if I smell a hint of that. I no, no, not no chitlins, no. Mm, I can't do chitlins, no. So what you going old school with with, with the dinner night? Chitlins, greens, cornbread, what else? Oh, uh, what was that? I think I said tea. Tea? What what kind of tea is it? Green tea, herbal tea, Long Island tea? What kind of tea? Cause I like the Long Island. Black folks tea. Oh, I can. Oh, I can. I need a Long Island right now. Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm doing eight things tonight, but I, I probably should have got some Long Island. But had I done that, I probably would have been passed out by now doing this blast. I'm just saying. But uh, but no, but I, I mean, back to the food though. Like I know you looked at me crazy when I said ten pounds of ground beef. Like even though it sounds like a lot. It's not really a lot. Like I got six pounds of uh, chicken breast in the uh, fridge right now, defrosting, because I'm gonna uh, cook that up for like the next week. Do that with some uh, stir fry, some uh, broccoli. Like, just saying, you know, I I, I, I gotta get back on it. I told you, I turned thirty in 2016. When I say I'm gonna have a dirty thirty birthday party, it's going down. I'm just trying to It's going down. <laughs> so, uh, I need to come. I need to come. Y'all are going to be a witness and a soul. I'm the resident. I mean, no, 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 no. See, see, you, you, you eating soul food where you at. You don't need to come over here. I, I don't do soul food. I mean, I do some food that is good to the soul, but I don't do soul food. You don't know what I got. <laughs> oh. I, I, here's the thing. Better yet, I mean, if you have been on my channel long enough, you will see that. I mean, I, I, I've done some food now, you know. Like I said, I, I'm, a, I'm a bad motherfucker when it comes to that deep fry. Oh. Thank you, Ryan. Oh. Deep fry, though. Thank you. That's what you get. I need one of those that y'all really have. Uh, now, now, look, Classy Boo says I can cook some good stuff. I, I mean, I can do a little Go something. Turn on the lamp on the bookshelf. And look where the cookbooks are. Uh, and you, know, you be, believe it or not, as chitlins being the main course, I only I, I eat chitlins the first night, and the rest I'm eating the sides. Yeah, I love chitlins. They are good, but only I I, I can I can't eat everybody. You know, Jay Darrell, you know you can't eat everybody's right. That's crazy. I know boys are just trying to play North Metro. Yeah, they trying it. They're trying to get a quick. They're trying to get a quick. I can't. I can't, I can't do chitlins at all. Male alone, like have have y'all ever? Well, actually, just with my book, I'm pretty sure you know when they open up the chitlins 
before you even start cleaning them and that spit mm -hmm. no no yeah. And see, and that's my, and that's why I say you cannot eat everybody's shit. See, in that aspect, that I, I do understand. And but, uh, in that aspect, I was, I was blessed with the mother, and she don't do the bucket, the bucket chicken, um, chilling like everybody else do. I, I don't see why no, everybody no, my, does that, especially when they don't. My clean, mom does you know? not. She buys the uh, pre-cleaned oh. chitlins and then she cleans them herself. Right. But still, the smell. Oh, I my mom does do, the same I thing. I can't do the smell. I, I can't. Right. That's what I do. And I love them, but I also love kosher foods as well. I love Jewish foods. Um, again, growing up, my mom yes, when I come when I come home from like work and, and the chitlins is already started, half the time I really don't know they chitlins. And so I actually go look in the pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My whole community was Jewish, so I eat a lot of uh Jewish dishes too. Some of them are not kosher, even like with my matzo ball soup that I make. I make it, but it's not kosher because you know there's certain products that are kosher and some that are not. Even though it's by Manischewitz, some things are not kosher for Passover. Right. But I still use the, you know, I use the the, the matzo crumbs to make my matzo ball soup. I love my matzo ball soup, and um, that's just something that I grew up on because okay. I come from a different, yeah. And um, I even had, I, I just sent my daughter to go get one of these old cookbooks I have. I don't know what year this is from. Um, what is she doing the front? Where is it? You know what? Why you look at since we talk about cookbooks? I got some. Y'all finna laugh. Hold on. Look, Yarell. Oh. All right. Well, okay. let me grab mine. Hold, hold on. Hold, okay. hold on. <laughs> I gotta find it. Which one is it? Um. Yeah, because he because he's Jewish. So um, yeah. But but even but even before I started getting books and things like that, because you know where where I grew up, everybody did that. I mean, please, and especially when it was called holiday time and school, and everybody would bring in the. I have a few, oh. but there's one recipe in here. It threw me completely off. I just gotta see if I, it was the name. I saw it. I was just like, "Are you fucking serious?" Hold, wait, let me find. Hold on. Let's just say one of the recipes has a uh, a very negative connotation of black people as the name. Does it have to do with toes? No, but it has to deal with an N word. Okay, because I've heard of the, you know the nigger toes. No, it's not that one. Wait, let me. Let me okay. it, 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 it and it's a Brazilian dessert. Nuts. It's a dessert. I read this. I was just like, you know what? You know, I I I, I had to put the book down for a minute. Hold on, let me see if I. Can. No, I'm yeah, serious. Yeah. I, I put it down. I was like, I no. no. I understand because I there was a recipe I heard of and it it had a, a bad name too, but. It had Brazilian nuts in it, and I didn't know that people called Brazilian nuts nigger toes. And when I looked at the, yeah, I looked at the Brazilian nut, and I'm saying, well, I've never seen anybody's toes look like this, but I guess because I've never seen. Yeah, y'all keep talking while I look for y'all keep talking, y'all keep talking. Oh, found it, found it. Here, I don't know what that is. All right, it's called. <laughs> if y'all can see it. It's in, it's flipped upside down, but it says nigger heads. It is, you know, in the out. Nigger heads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, three eggs, three tablespoons of sugar, three tablespoons of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a pinch of salt, and cream or custard. Yeah. Tell me again. I missed it because I had to refresh. What's it called? Uh, nigger heads. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, 
Because, like I said, I had bought the book. I was just like, you know what? This would be something nice to add to, you know, my collection. I have a couple. Like, I have cookbooks. So I, I like to cook. And I was going through, and I was, and I saw them. I'm just like, well, I'm going to put this off to the side. <laughs> yeah, haven't picked up the book since until today. Till today. Yeah. yeah, this is the International Goodwill Recipe Book. Yeah. yeah. And I'm and I'm trying to find the year. Cause I, I know this is old. That's what I was trying to find in my book too, the year of it, you know, but I don't know. But I know that it was so much and and I know times have changed, but when I was going to school you were allowed to bring food in. So you can't do that now. You can't bring cooked, pre-cooked food in. It has to be wrapped and packaged. It has to be store-bought. You're not allowed to bring food into schools. But when I was going to school, you could bring foods in it. And during holiday times, again, where I lived, there was so many uh, different cultures. And everybody would bring in foods, you know. And even with the where I grew up, I mean, well, shoot, Kugel was the bomb. You know, always having Kugel, man. That's now, wait, wait. Now, now, the Kugel that you had, was it sweet or was it savory? I've had both. Okay, okay. The sweet is with the raisins. I've had the savory, too, and I love them both. I've had both, yes. And, um, you know, like I said... Oh, this, you, know, you don't know about that Kugel. You don't know about that Kugel. <laughs> you don't know about that Kugel. Have you ever had Larkins? Have you had Lockets? Lockets, yes. Yes. Yes, love them. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Now that will make you fall in love with a potato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love, I love these potato. I just bought a fifteen-pound bag of potatoes yesterday. Ooh, <laughs> What did you oh. say? You her friend. <laughs> she loves potatoes too. Uh, I could go to y'all around house and stay at home with him and eat this potato. Mm -hmm. Different ways. Potato, chicken, potato. Look, good Lord of mercy. That's your workout right there. Lift that bag three times like this. That's it. Oh, I, I mean, I have have y'all not watched my videos? I love I chicken and potato. I saw your chicken fingers video, and then you had some more videos that popped up. But see, here's the thing. I was watching some of your videos on YouTube on my TV, and it won't let me comment or thumbs up. I can't do anything. So but, but, have you, but have you made the tenders though? Have you made them yet? No, I haven't, but they look good. I know they're good. Oh, oh you I gotta make them. Good. It'll make you slap your daughter. They so good. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I want you to talk about the youngest one, because they ain't gonna be me. I'm gonna go ahead and slap her right now for you. I told you, you slap me. <laughs> <laughs> She told me, she she thought the other day I was going to hit her. I couldn't believe she thought that. She said, Mom, I thought you were going to hit me. She said, I said to myself, if you hit me, I'm going to walk out your house. I ain't never coming back. I said, why would I hit you? She said, you were just mad. I thought you were going to slap me. No, no see, I, 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 I couldn't tip my mother with a good time. I'd be like, if you slap me, I'll leave right now. I'm telling you, by the time I, I'm almost done finishing the sentence, I would have had the hand right here. Mm -mm. That's what she told me. She said, Mom, I thought you were going to slap me. She said, I was saying to myself, if you slap me, I'm going to walk out. I ain't never coming back. I said, girl, why would I slap you? No, no, see, no. Here's the thing. My mom would have would have been had my bags already packed at the door. Like, you can leave right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might be her baby boy, but my mom be like, you can leave too? Shit. Okay. Yeah. See, I told her, I said, no, you, you're grown. I'm not going to put my hands on you now. I'm like, I might push you so bad that you think I hit you, but I'm not going to put my hands on you. 
But yeah, that Kugel and see again, we had the we had the Jewish deli, the Jewish bakery, everything was in that community. So there was just so much, and that's you know I remember the the lady sitting down on the bench waiting for the jitney. We had a jitney that used to come twice a week for them to go play mahjong at the rec center. And I'm telling you, I would love now. That's something that I want to collect. I have seen some of the most beautiful mahjong tiles. Oh my goodness, they are beautiful. And this one lady had a set. I know she had a set that was ivory. It had ivory, jade. Uh, th these were real, real ivory, real jade. And she said she got them from her mother. Now this lady was 80 years old when I was about 10. So that's before it was illegal to have ivory. And they were just so colorful and so beautiful. Have you seen some of those tiles from Mahjong? I haven't. <clears throat> I actually have not. They're beautiful. You know what? The, well, the first time I saw them, I said, oh, these are fancy dominoes. That's what I thought they were. I thought they were fancy dominoes. They had pictures and flowers and pretty colors and all that stuff. And when she explained to me what they were, I said, okay. And they used to sit outside and play them on the park bench too. But there was a jitney that would come up twice a week and pick these ladies up to go play at the rec center. And I remember again being a little girl and looking at this lady's hand. And I told her that her tattoo looked funny. I said, there's this funny looking tattoo. Why do you have numbers on it? And my mom poked me. And she poked me and the lady saw my mom poke me. And she said, no, it's okay. Do you mind if I tell her? And she said, well, no, I don't mind. So we sat there and she explained to me how she was in a concentration camp. But I didn't know what that was. I just thought that that was a funny looking tattoo because it had numbers. It wasn't a, a picture or something, you know. Okay. And she talked to me. And I remember always seeing they would have it on their hand and on their arm. And there was one lady I used to always wonder why she wore long sleeves all the time. And that's what it was. She was covering her number. So um, there's just so much. And I mean, the things that my parents are very diverse well plus our culture is different too i mean we we weren't <clears throat> we weren't quite accepted at first where we lived either i mean you know people look at this down most people think that, that i'm black or whatever I, i'm puerto rican and most of my family were puerto rican dominican cuban indian you know all of that but I mean, during the time, the years that we were growing up and depending on where you lived, some you weren't always treated the best. You weren't always treated the best. And there's a lot of things that I never experienced or I thought I didn't experience, just shielded us from. And one of them was that. So when we moved to this other place, it's like, well, I don't see anything going on. I don't see anything wrong, but I guess that was just my naivete as being a child. Hey, as being a child, yeah. But um, I had a great upbringing and I was always exposed to so many different cultures and foods and everything. So I really enjoyed it and it was nothing for me. You know, it's just, to me, it was normal. It's just the norm. But when I come across people these days and they act like this stuff is new, I look at them like, like they're an alien or something. I don't understand. <laughs> I got you. But, I got you. <clears throat> yeah. You know, you it's, know, a, it's crazy where I'm at right now. One of the uh, guys that I'm responsible for, he's also Jewish. And it was funny because a lot of people in my company did not know that he was Jewish because he doesn't wear Jamaica. But I do like, I, like oh, honestly, you would be hard pressed to see me without it. Mm -hmm. So me, it's like I'm a walking billboard. They didn't know that he was, 
but that was what we connected over like instantaneously. And because I'm Jewish, they put him up under me. And come to find out, they was like, oh, I didn't know you can get this because of this and this because of that. I'm just like, mm, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of stuff. But it's just like, you know, if people never dealt with it, just like um, with he and I being Jewish, you know, technically we should be eating at the dining facility. I have yet to step into once I've been here. I have used my money to buy my own food because I said I will not step foot in there because I don't know how they prepare anything. Right. Will not do it now. I'm still waiting for them to give me money and they go back payment, but I'm still waiting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he's been here uh, at least six to 12 months longer than me. So they're going to give it to him, but they're only going to give it to him from when I got here because no one knew, like they knew he was Jewish, but they didn't know that he can get separate rations. So he's going to get it, just not for the whole duration. But it's just one of those where it's just like people don't know. It's crazy. It, it's insane. But it's all right. It's all right. And she has, oh, her connection went down. Oh, no. Oh, there she is. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you know, I, I find that kind of strange that they said they didn't know that he could get separate rations. I bet they did, but they just didn't want to acknowledge it until somebody else made it, until you made no. it known. No, honestly, like, I don't think anybody knew. Really? I don't think, because it, it's like when I came there, that was one of the first things is that I was like, I, I want separate rations and I want kosher meals. Mm -hmm. When we go on our little uh, field problems and whatnot, like I made that perfectly clear. <clears throat> and it's only because with the separate rations, I knew about it because when I was in Alabama, because I was a shift worker, they gave me separate rations. Mm -hmm. But even in doing my research for dietary reasons, if you know, if the dining facility cannot uh, provide you meals, if it's feasible, they have to give you separate rations. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to, uh, you know, our field meals, they have kosher and halal for uh, the Islamic soldiers. Mm -hmm. They have kosher and halal MREs. And I knew that too from when I went to uh, WLC. So I came here already knowing. And it was like, well, can't you eat this? I'm just, they were like, can't you eat the vegetarian MREs? I looked at them just like, let me go on a field problem and I don't have kosher MREs. I guarantee you, y'all will have an IG complaint on your ass. And I'm going to do a Justin J. Faster than this. Hold on. You break Faster than fucking this. Say that one more time. Say that one more time. You froze. No, they were Say saying. Again. Uh, when they said. Can't no, you they were this? saying, uh, can't you eat the vegetarian ones? And I pretty much okay. said to them, and I had to give them a Justin J. 1232. If y'all do not provide uh, me with the kosher MREs, you will have an IG complaint on your ass faster then this. Okay. Bet you okay. I had them with the last two that we went on. Yep. As I tell you, because just because something is what they call vegetarian, you still don't know how they prepare those. I mean, that's just like me going to a relative's house and say, well, I don't eat certain meat, so I'm just going to eat the vegetables. But if they're throwing a chunk of yeah. pork in it to cook it, you're still giving me the same thing. Keep talking. I'm just going to go over here, but keep talking. <laughs> okay. I'm going to refresh, too, because I lost your picture. Hang on a second. Let's see. Oh, 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 <clears throat> oh, no. All right. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, um, you know, yeah. And there's a lot of things that I've cut out of my diet 
just because you know for for j just to eat better and um i mean I, I do eat pork i eat that it's it's limited but i do eat pork i i pretty much eat everything now i when i was trying to lose weight at one point i stopped eating red meat and i gotta tell you now we stopped you know, we used to cook out almost every day on the grill and my guy was a big steak person. Now, I've never been one for steaks. Basically, the only time I get red meat is if we have spaghetti or meatloaf. And that's not often. But I was never a steak person. That wasn't me. I love seafood. I love chicken, other stuff, you know, fish and poultry. So I would make the steaks because he wanted them. And every now and again, I would eat one. And I ate one. I said, oh, this is kind of good. <laughs> but I wasn't a big steak eater. So when I was changing my diet, he said that he would do it too. So we stopped. We, we went off red meat for about two weeks. And then he got weak. He's like, look, we fire up this grill every day. I need to smell some beef burning. <laughs> so I did. And I'm going to tell you what happened. We made steaks and hamburgers. Now, the kids didn't even notice a difference. They didn't even realize that we weren't eating red meat. They didn't even notice a difference. But he did, so I said, okay. The first time that we ate red meat again, now, it was only two weeks we went off. Do you know that there was a line for the bathroom? That red meat tore us up. And that's when I said, you know what? No more. <laughs> And I pretty much have not eaten red meat since. Now, every blue moon, I might want some spaghetti. Now, I'll use some other things to it. I might try a blend of, I, I don't like plain ground turkey as the meat base for my spaghetti. But I'll mix half and half. I'll mix turkey and beef or chicken and beef. I need some of that beef, but even that little bit, it bothers my stomach. And that's every, and that just comes from two weeks of me cutting that red meat. And I realized what it was doing to my body. I said, no, never again. And so it's rare that I will eat red meat. I'm serious. So I'm just, no, yeah. no, no, I, I understand. I, I did that too. I, I, I literally, um, I did the video. It's not it's scheduled, so y'all won't see it for a couple of days. But I, you know, I did my video about when I came home Jewish. Well, I did the other video because everybody wanted to know, like, how did you convert? So I talked about that. But no, like I initially, like I was, you know, changing up things, and I went from okay, I just stopped eating red meat altogether. Mm -hmm. And then I slowly added, I slowly added beef back into my diet. It really wasn't that bad for me. And the crazy thing, like when I say no red meat, it was poultry and fish, just like you. My mom, she would buy me um several pounds of uh ground turkey a week, some uh turkey ham and chicken products mm. and fish, and that would be it. And I even talked about uh, my brothers, like I was so fucking pissed. Like one day I made some um ground turkey tacos, <laughs> right? So I had some meat left over. It was a nice amount. And I'm coming back from school. She's like, yeah, I'm going to sit here. I'm about to eat this. And then I get home. I have just enough to barely make two. And I mean, barely. I was so fucking pissed. My brother's like, well, and I'm like, you know, I mm -hmm. don't eat beef. Why the fuck would you eat? Like, I was so heated. But I understand. Like, I understand for about a good two, three years, I didn't eat Beef. Well, I didn't eat pork for obvious reasons, but I didn't eat beef. I cut a lot. It was literally poultry and fish. That was my entire mm -hmm. diet. So, yeah, I know, I know. Yes, I said after that, I said no more. Mm -mm. And I'm saying to this day, my system can't take it. If I even if I do that fifty fifty blend with the turkey beef for the spaghetti or whatever, I'm telling you, my system can't. That red meat is just not. It's not doing it. It's no good for you. Hold on, what's wrong? What? A few. Don't take the whole thing. Okay, a few. Go ahead. Yeah, I am. Um...
<clears throat> yeah, I, I just can't do it. And now I'll tell you this about pork too. And I and look, I love pork, but there are only certain cuts I can eat. There are only certain cuts I can eat. I don't know if it's, I can't say it's, I, I don't guess I can say it's the way it's butchered. I think it's just certain parts of the body. that it, I don't know. There's just some I can't eat. It tears me up, tears me apart, can't do it. And I don't. And there's some things that I only eat, you know, on occasion, you know, holiday time, something like that. Like the chitlins that everybody was talking about. I love chitlins. I do. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I was told. If you walk in somebody's house, if you can walk in the house and say, oh, I smell chitlins, don't eat them. That's what I was told. Because you're not, if they're clean, you're not supposed to be able to smell it and know. Okay, but here's the thing. Thinking about how the digestive tract is in general, why would you want to eat the digestive tract, especially of an animal that would eat anything that has no sweat glands? And I think there, I forget how many different toxins there is in the world, but out of all of them, they can they contain all but one. And they sweat through the they do the uh do their fucking toes and whatnot like like the pus comes out of their no no I can't see I can <laughs> I can <laughs> yeah I can <laughs> I love them hey that's just I I love it I do <laughs> you can have, <laughs> you can have it. I do, man. Here's the thing, you know, it's so it's so crazy because when I come home, like it's funny because my mom, she semi makes a big deal about um, catering to me because it's like she she really doesn't get it. Like with my brother, my oldest brother, you remember how I said I didn't eat, you know, red meat for mm -hmm. a while, right? My brother picked that up. So whenever he comes around, she knows, okay, well, he can't have this. And I'm just like, how the fuck you go honor what he does when I invented the shit for our family? But that's okay. <laughs> but that's okay. Like, I'm gonna let him have, but it's just like, you know, like, one day like, she was cooking, she was like, well, I'm gonna have my greens with the smoke. I'm like, you can have that and you can have the Jiffy Cone bread too. Cause the Jiffy Cobra has hydrogenated lard, mm -hmm. which is fucking. Bo you can have yeah. all of that. You ain't got. I, I look at, like I want you to be disrespectful. I look at my mom like I can cook for yeah. my damn self. You can have whatever it is you want to eat. We good. We good. Like you not hurt my feelings. Now if you make some damn chitlins, you gonna hurt <laughs> right. my damn feelings. Because <laughs> right. I can smell. Well, it. now with the greens, like, what you were talking about with the greens. And with beans, because I learned I learned that country soul food cooking really since I've been in the South, because my mom never cooked that way. We didn't eat like that. But I learned it, and I kind of taught myself. I tasted it. I just got great taste. Was I can taste and pick out, oh, this is in it, that's in it, this is in it, you know. And I watched people, and I pretty much taught myself. Now, what I do remember, it's funny because when I go back and remember seeing my grandmother, well, one of my one particular grandma, my grandmother on my maternal side, um, would make the soul food, but she never used like the ham hock thing, whatever. She used smoked turkey wings, smoked turkey, and it gives you the exact same flavor. It gives you the same amount of oils that you want. You really, you cannot tell the difference in taste, but you can tell the difference in your body. Okay. Yes, yes. So I will use the smoked turkey. If I want to season greens or beans and things like that, the smoked turkey next, smoked turkey wing, smoked turkey anything. And it, gives, it tastes yeah. just as good. It gives you that good old soul food cooking. And it doesn't kill your body, you know. But every now and again, I know I I, I use smoke good. turkey too. I do. And actually, my mother, because um, because it's funny, her oldest and her youngest 
uh, boys don't do pork. So she keeps smoked turkey products in her freezer for the both of us <laughs> because she knows because when either one of us come home, she's like, okay, well, I know the only thing is when she cooks for me, she knows, okay, well, he like, okay, my oldest just can't have this. My youngest can't have a whole lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> so more often than not, she's just like, you know what? Like, like with dressing and whatnot, you know, or stuffing, whatever you want to call it. She'd be like, just make your own damn dressing. <laughs> gladly. I will gladly mm -hmm. do it. And make sure don't anybody touch it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? It's so crazy because uh, she and I, we actually yeah, talked about this and it's so funny. Um, Because like I said, my mother's in her 60s, you know, it is what it is, but she has aged very gracefully. And, you know, um, it was like a discussion about what would happen. And I said, well, if I'm back home and if everything is going right, you can live with me. She was like, oh, and her, she was quick with it. Yeah, I'm going to live with you. I'm like, but <laughs> there is a but. You're not going to eat what you, you, you are accustomed to eating because once you come past that yeah. threshold, we're not going to have all that shit. And then she kind of looked at me like, I don't want to fucking live with your ass. I was like, well, damn. But I kind of looked, but I looked at her at the same time and I'm going to do this. Will your other two sons take you Oh, uh, uh, sip, sips tea. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. No, but I mean, the, but the reality is like, I even tell my mom, like, you live with me, you're going to yeah. eat good. I about to say, I mean, again, I left Korea 275 fucking pounds. So I know okay. how to cook. <laughs> I mean, you you eat good. You just won't eat everything the way that you're used mm -hmm. to eating it. Now, that's not to say if you want to go down the street and get you some smothered pork chops and all that, you can go mm -hmm. get it. Just don't bring right. it in the house. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And, and I can understand that. But, that's right. But, but my mother, like I said, what I, I've said this in the video, we are exactly alike except for she's worse than me because i'm her child not in a bad way i'm just saying i'm her child so people like when people think i'm bad you ain't make the original <laughs> the maker yeah you ain't, make, you, ain't, you ain't like what like because you know i did my video about being able to cut family off my mom can mm -hmm. do the same thing she tolerates them a little bit better but when i but when she cuts you off <clears throat> Oh, oh man, I know about that because my grandmother, honey Elizabeth Crisco, you talk about being cut off. She will go you one better. She didn't cut people off. You know what she would do? And this is before Facebook. She would kill you off. You would ask her, "Well, Grandma, what about so?" Oh, they're dead. You would think people would. Girl, oh my God, so, I'm sorry. You would think that would. Be. I remember we were out one day and saw this lady, and my mother went into shock. Yeah, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm trying to grab my mother because my mother is literally, she's going into a fit. She's upset. And I'm like, what's wrong? And I'm grabbing my mom and I'm looking with, I don't know what's going on because she can't talk. She's going up, but I'm following the direction of her eyes. And I see the person she's looking at. And I'm like, well, damn. So I'm like, my grandmother, we thought she was dead. My grandmother would kill your ass off. She'd tell you, oh, they're dead. <laughs> These people weren't dead. When she was through with you, you were dead. When they say dead to me, she meant you were dead, dead to her. In the damn uh, uh, Van Brook Mall, that woman, oh my God. My mother, oh. And I didn't know that my mother had a close relationship with this woman. I knew the lady. I've seen her, but I didn't know that my mom had an affinity for her. You know, I didn't know how close they were. She really thought, well, I heard she was dead too. I just figured she's dead. And when we saw that lady, oh my God. And so the first thing we did when we got home is my mom grabbed the phone, called my grandmother and said, we just saw her. She is not dead. And you know what my grandmother said? 
The hell she ain't. She did to me. <laughs> she said, the hell she ain't. <laughs> she said she dead. She been dead 10 years. My grandmother would kill you smooth or just kill you, kill you, kill you dead. I was like, damn. But see, again, she's the same woman that I told you that I knew would use the, uh, you know, the smoked turkey products for making the soul food. Yeah. Now, um, my grandmother, well, she she did pretty well for herself. And plus, you know, with my grandfather, and it couldn't hurt that she had five husbands, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but um, she was pretty, financially, she was okay, okay? <laughs> but um, she would still work. And she was a nanny for a family the Manhattan on Park Avenue. And the cook quit. The cook quit and my grandmother was on her way home and they asked her, would she please go in the kitchen and make a meal and they would pay her extra if she would cook dinner because they were expecting people to come over. And so my grandmother said, okay. She got her money first. <laughs> She got her money first and she said she took off her coat and went in that kitchen and she cooked them some food. And from that day on, her salary was doubled and she was not just the nanny. She made the meal. Okay. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, she would make the meals and they were Jewish. And they they lived by all the rules as far as their dietary needs and things. So um, she learned how to she learned how to make the food that they like, make it taste good without violating what they're supposed to have. And so I learned a lot from her when it came. And she was making what was that thing? Oh Lord, I'm trying to think. <sighs> They have to put some cheese in it. No, not that. Uh, -uh. no. Oh, but that—that's a reminder. No, she also let me know, um, why they want a lot because the girl, my my grandmother worked for them for a lot of years, and she saw the girl one day at a diner, and the girl was eating a cheeseburger, and my grandmother went in there and she said, "Come here, baby, let me talk to you." <laughs> <laughs> she said, now I'm not going to tell on you, but you know you're wrong. You know you're not supposed to do that. Well, okay, wait, wait. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because I know that rule. Mm -hmm. I know that rule. It is not a biblical rule. That is a rabbinic rule. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, it says, you shall not boil a kid in the milk of his mother. Right. Meaning you will not boil a baby goat in his mother's milk, milk right. because way back when it was considered a delicacy. Right. That is what the Bible says. Now, the rabbis have what they call the fence around the Torah, right. which is, okay, what God says. So we're going to place a restriction on top of that, meaning if you don't violate what we said, you cannot violate what God says. So for her to have that cheeseburger, technically, biblically, she's not wrong if we're going to be very very technical mm -hmm. so my question would be was she orthodox or was the group of them orthodox because if they were orthodox then yeah, yeah. is is strongly frowned upon right. i only say that because i think i'm reformed right i keep a lot of orthodox tradition but i'm reformed and, you know and i know the difference between the two yeah and you're right and see that brings another question Hold on, don't leave. I gotta refresh because I lost your picture. Hold on. Oh, there you're back. You're back. You're back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's another thing too. Now you remember when I was telling you that I grew up in the Jewish community? There were so many different kinds. I'm telling you, I, I remember asking, and, and this is what I love about people educating other people and children, which is so different from today. We're in a time and day where you can learn everything, but nothing can be said or asked or politically incorrect. 
and I'm sick of that. Because when I was a kid, you could ask a question or say something, either they answered you or you didn't, but you didn't get your butt slapped around for it or whatever, you know? Okay, in my community, we had every kind of Jewish person under the sun. I remember saying, mommy, he's bald head with curls. What's that? I mean, we saw people going to yeshiva. Look, I'm growing up in, I, you know, we're from Puerto Rico, but we grew up, we were raised in New York. Okay, yeshiva community, the whole community. Okay, so we got Hasidic, yeah. we got Orthodox, we got, I'm, yeah. we got, we had so many different people in the Jewish community, and even they had different beliefs within each other. We had women who yeah. didn't uncover their hair. We had women with no hair and no eyebrows. All of it different, but they're all still Jewish, but they di different beliefs of, you know. So I learned a lot. And when my grandmother would prepare these meals, that's where I learned a lot of the recipes that I know that were Jewish recipes. Ah, okay. I got right. you. Right. Because she, she <laughs> was cooking for them. She They were the Deckners, and the Deckners were, uh, were a very wealthy family in Manhattan. And when my grandmother met my grandfather, well, this one, which was her fifth husband, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Her fifth husband, he was upset. He's like, you don't have to go in there cooking for those folks and blah, blah, blah. And I got money. I make money. You know, he's one of these. And she's like, do you make this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She was making bank, okay? And that's all she had to do. She started out as a nanny and through a fluke of, of cook quitting, she doubled her salary. Yeah. Okay. And all she had to do well, was see, watch Monica and cook some food. Well, see, what a lot of people don't realize is when it comes to uh Jewish cooking, it is a very big deal, especially for those who keep um very strict kosher. Yep, because that's the only place she could shop. She had to go to the, they it's had to go there and get the chickens from the kosher deli yeah. where the rabbi yeah. said the blessing before they they killed the chickens, put them on the salt. A rabbi came in once a week. Well, here's the thing. There's two things. One, that is a misconception. But it did. The rabbi did. It, it might have happened, but the rabbi doesn't have to bless the food. The only reason that a rabbi comes in, the rabbi is supposed to inspect the facility. That's what he did. To ensure there's no cross contamination. Right. That's what that's for. The whole blessing before you eat, you say your prayers anyway. So you're blessing the food regardless. Yeah. I mean, so there's that. But when I uh, was in Alabama, I had all of my, initially I had my meat shipped from New York. It was a uh, kosher cuts direct, mm -hmm. but they went out of business. So then I had my meat shipped from Atlanta and that was a uh, grill's pride. So I had kosher meat shipped to Alabama from either New York or Atlanta. Like when I say I kept kosher. Yes. You kept kosher. I, I mean, I kept I kept it strict mm -hmm. to the point where I I do it now, and it's mostly because you know with everything I'm doing to get my body weight down, I do mix dairy and meat. But back then, when I say I spaced out when I ate dairy and when I ate meat, it was serious. So I know how it is, yeah. and I can imagine your grandmother being paid heavily, yeah, because you have to use different dishes from you know uh plastic wear to actual uh pots and pans and if you use one for the other you have to cleanse it a certain way it has to rest like i know yeah so i know she got paid yeah i know she got paid. yes you are so right i remember her telling me about that too and i was going to say that but you you got it you nailed it on the head she was told okay you have to use this for that you can't make this when you make this you don't use the same pot you don't do this don't do that and she's saying She's saying, because she told she's like, I have to use so many things. I'm just making this meal. It don't take this many pots and stuff and these many pans and dishes. And she said, but then she looked at it and realized that even though she was paid to be, now she's the cook. But 
she didn't have to wash the dishes. Somebody was supposed to wash the dishes. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. I'm like, whoo. She said, well, I don't care then. <laughs> and she she was paid. And I'm like, wow. The wages she made then, I, man, I would punch somebody in the yeah. nose to get that right now. Okay. <clears throat> I mean. I mean, but, but, but even if you talking about that, I mean, I'm glad you could recognize it because I know some people think that when I'm on YouTube, I know a lot of people think that this right here uh-huh. is a gimmick. It's really not a gimmick. Yeah. Like, this is my life. It's like I said, I mean, when I say I have cookbooks for days, mm-hmm. I have cookbooks for days. Like, when I say I know about <clears throat> kosher cooking, yeah, I know about kosher. I, I know about it to the T. It was to the point when I was in Alabama, like, if somebody, like, because I wouldn't go over anybody's house, they would have to literally clean all of their shit and then invite me over. And I would feel so bad. I was just like, you don't have to do this. Mm-hmm. You really don't. But I mean, they did. And, you know, I was happy about it. But I know about it. Yeah. Trust and believe. I know what's up. Hi, we just said, hey, Ellie Going on. Oh, what's up? Oh, okay. What y'all doing? They're shooting the shit. That's all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, and when I first started, you know, when I was hearing you talk about it, I said, "Oh yeah," and it was really just bringing back so many memories for me because I remember her showing me things and what she learned and what she was doing at work carried over into her home, and that's what I learned, and so. That's the way that, that that I've eaten. That's the way we've all eaten. It, you know. You know what? But but that's good. Yeah. That, it, it's good to have the mixing of cultures. Mm-hmm. It, it's really good. And honestly, <clears throat> there are so many Jewish recipes that are great. And believe it or not, <clears throat> like I said, I'm from Chicago, but my family is mostly from Mississippi, mm-hmm. mostly Starkville. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, most people from Chicago are from the South, primarily Mississippi, not Mississippi. I'm talking about Mississippi. Mississippi. Country. <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> so what I've ended up doing is a lot of the um a lot of the um soul food dishes that I'm accustomed to, like uh greens and whatnot, I've had to do my own adaptation to where it tastes good, but it's, you know, quote unquote, kosher okay. and being able to, you know, mix and mingle. So I said, I don't do anything pork, but anything pork related, I'll substitute regular Crisco or I might use uh, smoked turkey. Like I've learned how to um, mix and match to, you know, still kind of get that taste. Right. And it's not, it's never taste the same. It will never taste the same. But being able to make it to where when I have it, it makes me think about, okay, this is home. This is what I had over there, but I can have it over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually, believe it or not, sometime in 2016, I'm going to do a recipe that is called Not My Mama's Greens. All right. (laughs) Because what I'm going to do, because I said simply all that it really is, is, um, taking um jellied um chicken um broth Mm -hmm. and the reason i call it jelly is like like whenever i cook a whole chicken when i'm done cooking the chicken i'll put the uh remains the juices in the container put in the refrigerator Mm -hmm. when it solidifies i scoop off the fat because you know in the jewish culture that's schmatz so i'll put that in a separate container and the uh broth is jelly because there's no water in it and what i'll do is i'll take the jelly broth Put that in a container, let it cook down, and then I'll take smoked turkey, whatever, 
and let that cook inside. And once it's all tender, pull the meat off, chop it up, pour the uh, jelly mix into um, ice trays, and then use it from there. And when I go and make my uh, greens, I don't use greens. I use kale and spinach. Mm -hmm. So chop that up, and then I'll have the uh, broth melt down. And I'll take some uh, garlic, some onions, and then I'll throw the kale in there. And once it, as soon as it wilts, that's it. I don't let it cook too much, but once it wilts, those are my greens. Yeah. So I'm going to do a recipe called Not My Mama's Greens because it's not my mama's greens. It's mine, but you still get that smokiness. You still get the meat. Yeah. You get some roasted garlic, some roasted onions. You get all of that with all the uh, nutrients and everything in it. So, yeah, I've had to sit here and do some, uh, you know, adaptations of that soul food now, but yeah. Well, I'm here for, you know, you need to do a cookbook. You know, a lot of people have said that I'm thick. I don't know if I do a cookbook, I would have to do two different cookbooks. One would have to be, um, I would have to call it kosher for the soul. And a lot of the recipes are just literally adaptations of what I grew up eating. Right. But the other one, I, if I did a, a cookbook, I would do two, that one. And I would do a uh, fitness one where I show you how you can make good meals that are not like are not very heavy in calories, but heavy in nutrients. Because I don't know if you've seen that one, but I did one with um, roasted tilapia, teriyaki, um, broccoli, and brown rice. And that whole big plate was under 500 calories. Mm -hmm. So if I did a cookbook, it would be two different ones. And, you know, just two good ones where it's just like, because as you can see, you know, I'm when I was talking about branding, you know, I'm getting in, back into health and wellness. Right. And I've lost over 40 pounds in the last, you know, three and a half months. <clears throat> so I am going to do uh, more health related uh, cooking videos. I'm going to do regular cooking video because, you know, not everybody trying to get slim. Some people just want to eat good. <laughs> I'm just saying, but I I'm going to do it. Yeah, you should do that. But a cookbook, it's, I, might, it's good. I might do a cookbook. Yeah, it's good that you would do two cookbooks because that's two streams of income. That's two separate streams of income. It's still books, but you do one that's kosher and you do one for fitness. That still has the same elements, you know, because you're not going to put in there things that you know are not right. But even still, yeah. yeah. So you, you got, yeah, you got two lines. That's what you do. <laughs> and, do, and you know, I would say for years, people used to tell me that I used to, that I needed to make a cookbook and do recipes. And you know what my problem was? I said, I can't. I wanted to, and I knew I could make money, but I said, I can't give up my secrets. If I give once I give them up, it's gone. Now wait, wait, wait. There are some recipes that if I do it, you're going to get one version, <laughs> but you're not going to get the version. Is that right? <laughs> I, no, no, I, no, no. Like, like you know, I have my website yarel.net, and I have <laughs> recipes on there. <laughs> Have you ever had a challah? Have you ever had huh? Have you ever had challah? Eat olives? Challah, oh, yeah, the, the uh, Jewish egg yeah. bread. Now, I make a sweet one. The one that's on my website is the uh, mildly sweet one. Now, the one everyone else has had that I've made, and uh, she's off, is... um. It, let's just say it's more of a candy bar than it is bread. So that recipe is not going to make that cookbook. That one I'll share with my kids. But other than that, it's going to follow me to the grave. That's all that I'm saying. You saying your collard bread is like a Snickers bar? No, oh, well, I, I can't tell you oh, what's you know, in it, but the but, one that I... Because, I, yeah, I, I know the collar. That's the three braid, yeah. Collar? No, no, the, the one that I made, let's just say, um, what I'll do is if you're on my uh, tea spilling fan page, I will post a picture. But if you look at it in the center, it's like a little swirl, and it's a lot of... um. 
chocolatey peanut buttery goodness in the oh. center. I will never, I will never put that recipe in a cookbook. I'll put the original <laughs> sweet holla in a recipe, but you're not going to get the very beefed up version. Like, no, seriously, I've had people call it uh, comatose bread, diabetes <laughs> bread, like, the whole not. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are you trying to choke my mama out, y'all real? I'm not trying no, I'm being honest. It's what they call it. I'm being okay. <laughs> And she just I have to call like, the you <laughs> No, like, no, no, no. Seriously, it's so crazy. Like I've had you some people it up. All like, right. <laughs> Like they put ice cream and chocolate syrup on it, and it made it into like a decadent meal. Like, like it was to the no, it was to the point when I was in Korea, I sold it five dollars for half a loaf and ten dollars for money. a whole loaf. That's how good. That's it was. money. And and here's the thing, they I've had people buy two loaves at a time. It was that good. Now I tell you what, I have made a dessert out of babka. Do you like cinnamon babka? A little bit. You don't like the cinnamon? Not, I, well, I'm not really a big cinnamon fan. Okay, how about chocolate babka? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I made a dessert from cinnamon babka, and it is so good. Now, I love cinnamon, but I understand if you're not a cinnamon fan, you're not really going to like it. Because the cinnamon is heavy, and so if you don't like cinnamon, you not you might not like. Okay, I put it this way: if you don't like cinnamon, you may not like the cinnamon babka. But the dessert that I make from it is good because it will cut the cinnamon. Because okay. I made it from you know I made the babka. It sat around for like three days, so I sliced it up. And I said, you know, because I didn't want it to go to waste. So here was my idea. This was just something I was doing off the cuff. I said, okay, I can make like a bread pudding. I'm going to cut this babka up was left over. I'm going to cut it up and make a bread pudding, but I'm going to use the cinnamon babka. Oh, yeah. It was so good. I won a ribbon at my apartment community. It was Christmas time and they were holding it. I won a blue ribbon and a hundred and fifty dollar gift certificate. Yes. From that's my good. Friend, but that's yes. Good. And that's because I didn't want my babka to go to yeah, you remember that? I remember that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I said I, I, I didn't want my stuff to go to waste. And but it wasn't any good to eat as it was anymore. But I'm like, okay. I mean, it wasn't bad, but you know, it gets hard. Yeah. So I said, well, I can make a bread pudding. So I cut it up and I mix it because once you put, you know, once you put the eggs and and everything in the milk and everything, it softens it. Then you put it in the oven. So I made this bread yeah. pudding from this leftover cinnamon babka. Ooh. Yeah. I'm telling you, I got my blue ribbon and my hundred and fifty dollar gift certificate. Yes, they loved it. Well, I mean, you know what? Uh, with the uh, holla that I made, <clears throat> uh, we had a uh, Christmas party one year. I was actually pulling uh twenty four hour duty, and before then, you know, because when I was talking about you know the uh, good, bad, and the ugly, where I had to, you know take over as you know the overseer of the building yeah. i was considered a senior so we were in a meeting and they were talking about who's going to uh donate what for the uh christmas party <laughs> that they called a holiday yeah. party. Yeah. and they were like exactly it was just like so are you going to make i'm like are you asking me are you telling me because you tell me to make any motherfucking thing i ain't doing shit it was like, we're asking i'm like what i'll do is <clears throat> I will make you guys two loaves of my sweet bread, because what I call it, and that's it. I was told when they had it out there, people were apprehensive about eating in the very beginning, but after a few people had it, 
there was one dish that went before everything else. It was my holla. It went before everything else. I'm just like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. All right. Like I said, and I told them what you do is before you serve it, warm it up in the microwave so you can let all the chocolate and everything melt. Want, yeah. Melt again, let it get soft. Yeah. I, and, and, the, and at the same exact time, I'll give you one. I, I gave you two ingredients. I'll give you one more. I put uh, in the holiday edition, I put heat bits in it. Oh, oh, that's it. oh, that's stop it. it. That's it. I love butter toffee, baby. A heat bar, you got me. You got me. Yeah. And I'm not a sweets person or a candy person. Now, I, I'm, I bake and I bake my butt off, but I'm not big on eating sweets or candies, but I love butter toffee. A heat bar will make me bop somebody in the forehead. I love it. Do you know? I went to Walmart and bought a bag of Heath chips. If you go to Walmart, they ha- wait. They have it. Yes. Really? Yes. Well, then I need to get some then because I need some Heath bits now. Uh huh. And, and it's a bit. It comes. You go in the aisle where they sell chocolate chips. And yeah. the, you know the ba- the baking goods. It's a bag, and it's name brand. It's Heath. But no, no, that's that's what I got. But I didn't know they had them here. Cause I know when I was in Korea, it was a seasonal item, so they only sold it at Christmas time. Uh-huh. Is it around here? Yeah, cause you said you're in Fayetteville, right? Yeah. yeah, I got a bone to pick with you about that too. But yeah, they got it in North Carolina. Yeah, go to Walmart, go to Food Lion. Okay. You can get a bag of Heath chips. And I, okay, and, and and it's um, I think it's like twelve ounces. It's close to a pound. And yes, I put those in my cookies. Now, here's the bone. I got two bones to pick with you, babe. What? All right. Bone number one. When you were leaving Korea and you were on your way back, you you got to Chicago. And then you said you were en route. Now, you didn't tell anybody exactly where you were going in North Carolina. But when you started naming cities where you stopped off, you know, you would make a video where you were. I was sending you private messages saying, I know where you And I replied. I replied. I didn't get it. I replied. I didn't get it. I said, I he is right here. Especially when you were in um um up by Elon College. You were up by Elon, um Summitville, Elon, um I forget where, but I was only a couple of hours away. No, so. not hours, a couple of miles. I said, he's right up the road. You were on, okay, you, wherever you were, it was near Eli. You were like on, on the outskirts of Burlington is where you were. By Elon College and um, Elon Summit. The, you were so, I said, he's right here. I said, well, let me, so then I said, well, I can't get mad because there's no telling when he's going to check his messages. He just put the video on. I don't know if he's going to check them before he leaves or whatever, right? Then I find out later on around Thanksgiving time, I find out where you are. I was up there with you. I was in Lumberton. And then one of those messages, I think it was the one when you were on your way, when you had just gone past me. And I told you, I said, look, and I knew about your dietary needs. You, you know, your dietary uh, needs. So I said, well, just let me know I'll come if you need, you know, you want to take a rest, take a break, or I'll just bring you a pie. Just let me know where you are. I'll come to you. I heard nothing from you. Then, so that was when you, then I found out, okay, he's in North Carolina now. So I'm thinking North Carolina, but I don't know where because I'm saying, well, there's a lot of different uh, uh, uh facilities here because you know we got all kinds of a branch of the military okay look i i just pulled up the video it wasn't in the title but i did say that i was two hours away from north carolina so but i mean i i i replied when i was in i think when i was in yeah i was in shelbyville kentucky i did say this is this this is where i'm at and i didn't hear anything so i just checked into a hotel and i was there like two to three hours away from fayetteville so, but then I replied, I don't know what's no, you, you but did I another video, 
and you were near, you named the city, and I said, he's at Elon College. You were on the outskirts of Burlington. You were near, because what you were naming, I said, that's Elon. And I said, that's right up the road. There's like Burlington, Hoar River, Elon, Greensboro. You were between Greensboro and somewhere. And I'm going, he's headed in a direction. Nothing. Okay, so I'm going to let you have that. But then come Thanksgiving time, I'm saying, well, where is he? Because I saw your video before I left. I was in Lumberton, which is right from Fayetteville. Because you got to pass through to get there from where I come from, where, where I'm coming from. So you got, um, uh, uh, what's the place? Like, you know where Campbell University is, right? I, d I don't travel. I don't travel. I don't know what the hell is around me. But you're in, in Fayetteville. There, you so you at AFB? Are you at AFB? Or well, if you can't tell, it's okay. Uh, but now, I'm just well, I mean, now I'm at Bragg. I'm at because if anybody, because like I said I have my PO box on my damn YouTube, so I'm at Bragg. So there it is. Okay, so that's what I'm saying, and I know where all of that is, and I had to go through all of that to get there, and I'm saying, man, I could have saw him. I could have brought him something. We could have hung out a little bit. And then when I get back, I'm saying, no, he's not. That's where he is. And I was right there. Because, OK, you got Campbell University. I can't think of the name of that little city. Lillington. Lillington. It might it might have been that. But I know it's like two to three hours away from here. So that might have been it. Well, Man. Lillington is not that far from Fayetteville. Lillington is like on the outskirts. You got Lil no, 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 what's your point? No, get the point out the refrigerator, babe. Let's see the refrigerator. It's either mine or yours or Rachel's. The one from um, Anna Maria's. Yeah, the call one. I'm sorry. Yeah, Lillington is like the outskirts of, uh, it's between Fayetteville and Campbell University, all of that stuff. Okay. I don't. When I say I don't travel, I don't. Tra I don't know what is around me. I don't travel. Okay. Well, I'm gonna tell you. Well, let me hit you to something then. Lillington. It, it now, although it's a one horse town, it's where all other people from your base go to hang out. Well, wait, wait. Then I don't want to go. I'm not trying to be around other people. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, I'm at that as a as a But yeah, you don't want to go there. I, I would say, now I'm going to tell you, they got some good hole in the walls, but you don't want to go there because here's the thing. Now, honestly, you can have fun, but being that you're military, I don't know what the issue is, but they give military people a hard time. I think they're jealous because they never made it out. And so anybody who comes that close, they get mad about. Well, here's the thing. If you think about it, when I am fresh cut, because how, because uh, 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 of how my hair friend. is. Let me get my, whoa, whoa. I got to, let me get my. <laughs> no, what, 
what I'm saying is like I don't necessarily look the part, so I could get a pass, you know. Yeah, but I mean, are you the type of person that tells them I'm in the military? I, I'm just, uh, baby, I'm just asking. I'm gonna tell you why. For some reason, I don't know why, but I think I do. I think they're upset that they never made it out and they get tired of people coming from the base, coming to have a good time in their town and leaving with their women and their men and they get pissed. <laughs> so they're like, hell no, you can't come here. But as long as you don't let them know you're in the military, you will have a great time. But I will tell you this too. No, I take it back. No, don't go. Because they're going to try you a little bit, and I don't want you getting into any fights. <clears throat> they're crazy. Uh, I, have a, I, I said I have an attitude problem, so yeah, I don't I don't. Yeah, to I go. just thought, I, don't go, because they, they, they will try. They know mm, when somebody's not from there. And, and if my sister, Lady Nika, find out, she gonna drive her ass from street for Louisiana. And then she gonna try and get right. me too. Talk about why the hell you telling? Now she gonna want to jump on me too for telling you to go. Hell no, don't go. I take it back. I take it back. Don't even go. Never mind. I didn't say nothing. This is a dream. You didn't hear it. It's a mirage. <laughs> It's a mirage. You didn't hear anything yeah. I just said. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I could be on my Beyonce. I've been drinking. <laughs> I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> now, in that case, if you want to be on that, what you need to do, now don't tell nobody I told you. You need to go to Maxton. That's M-A-X-T-O-N. You looking for a pen? Yeah. That's right. Go to Maxton. I keep a pen on that. All right. Go to Maxton. Now, I'm going to tell you what's, what Maxton is. There's only two things in Maxton. That is the Campbell Soup Factory and the Indian Reservation. Baby, there is no more fun to be had in the world than when you go up on that reservation. Okay? Maxton. That you were telling grandma about, and you and grandma were talking about. Yeah, but I didn't tell her everything because she didn't need to know. I know. Okay, for her. <laughs> but I was just saying. I was just asking you if that was the same place. Well, yeah, but I didn't tell her everything because she didn't hey. need to know that. I want to see she gonna keep up. Well, anyway, yeah. If Go to Max. I'm leaving. You hit me, I'm leaving. Hush. <laughs> yeah, honey, there is nothing but fun in Maxton. I'm telling you. Honey, you go up on that reservation and you know that the laws are different. When you go on Indian territory, when you go on a reservation, the laws are different. So you can do what you want to. You're not going to. Certain laws don't apply. So the police aren't coming out. They're not, uh, you know, not saying that anything's going where the police need to come. I'm just saying, if you having fun and you, you can stand outside and drink, the police can't come and say, oh, you're outside drinking. We're going to give you a ticket because that's reservation land. They can't do that. If you if you're off the reservation, it may be like you might be at a nightclub or something. If you step outside the door with a drink, you can get a ticket. But if you go on the reservation, you can't get a ticket. Okay. Yeah, because they have no jurisdiction. Hmm. They have the, 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 the regular police have no jurisdiction on the reservation. So if you come outside, if you want to sit outside or stand outside and drink or smoke your vapor or a cigarette or a cigar, they don't bother you. Nice. Now, well, yeah. So, and that's the difference because when you're down in the rest of the city, you can't do that. And 
you know, sometimes you might want to step outside and catch a breath of air or smoke a cigarette or whatever, but you're not allowed to take your drinks outside. Now, you can take them, but if you take them, they can give you a ticket. But when you're on the reservation, they don't have Okay. <clears throat> have jurisdiction. Real good food. You get good food because they are really natural in what they eat. Uh, you got a lot on the reservation. There's a lot of they're all Lumbee Indians, and they have uh, mutton and everything. They they catch their food and they cook it, and they sell it, and you get fresh, good cooked food. All of their herbs are fresh. They go and pick their herbs, their spices. They grow everything. And they set up like little food carts. And you can just, you, you just eat, drink, dance, laugh, party, play cards. I mean, you just have so much fun. You really do. Okay. <clears throat> so um, you can gamble too now. I'll say this much. I don't gamble. I'll, okay, because I was going to say, I'll say this much. You can gamble, but if I were you, I would not gamble because they don't play about their money. <laughs> so I don't gamble. So we're well, good. Well, that's good. As long as you don't gamble, I'm telling you, check out Maxton, and I'll tell you this too. A lot of pretty ladies. Honey, don't, have you seen those lumpy Indians? Maybe they are gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y'all know I'm single. Y'all know I'm single. <laughs> oh, you heard that? <laughs> yeah, he heard you. You sit right here. I ain't thinking it can be that. I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> all right. Well. All right. So we've been on here for a hot minute. I think it's about time that I get off because I got to do some other stuff. But I will say thank you for joining me. It, it has been great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to um, uh, the Ghetto View. Uh -huh. And she's going to upload this to uh, her channel. Uh, just put this out there for you know anybody that's watching on YouTube. Uh, Squeaky Jones will be hosting another uh, panel talk on Saturday. <clears throat> so you are around. Check it out. She will disclose uh, when uh, she's going well, what time she's going to do it. And again, just read my book one. Thank you. Um, I said, uh, uh, the ghetto view. Thank you. And, um, Jada rail hut and, uh, James Cobo. Thank you. So thank everybody for watching. I said, don't forget. We're going to do this every week, but it's going to be every Saturday. Thank everybody for joining us. Have a happy blessed New Year, and I hope to see everybody in 2016. And All right, bye. and we enjoyed you. Bye, y'all. Don't forget the book. <laughs> Love you. Bye bye. Love Love you. Love you.